here we are again on another episode of Just Another Kill Team Podcast, where you are hearing from myself, Jason, as well as Travis over here. Hello, hello. And today we have Shane from Command Point. Hi, how's it going? We're here to talk about the North Northeast and the oh, yeah. growing scene. Yeah, that's uh it exists, you know. There's <laughs> there yeah. are uh there there's you know, there's movement at the moment, which is cool. Um more than really ever, honestly. Yeah. I mean, we just had George on and he I think they have a tournament next week. Is that right? Are you going yes. to that? I am going to that, yeah. And then there's the Salt City GT a little bit later in the year, I think mm-hmm. in June. Is that July, right? July for July. Salt City. And then you have your own tournament at the end of this month, right? Yeah, I'm. Uh, the it's the Rochester scene. So I'm in Rochester, New York. Um, Rochester scene is not huge, really, but I'm trying to build it up a little bit. See what I can do with uh, with getting some of our uh, our players to attend and. It's not super cutthroat competitive these days, but uh, maybe one day we'll reach that point. Are the Toronto boys coming down? I don't know. I'm trying to get them to come down because I'm coming up for them. So it would only be fair you know, if they return yeah. the favor. I'll, I'll shill a little bit when I go to Toronto next week. Yeah, good luck, good luck. I mean, if you do well, it'll it'll be easier for you to make the push, right? Yeah. Is that tournament sold out or do you still have open slots? The Which one? The Toronto one? The Rochester one. Oh yeah, there's plenty of open spots. Um, we have enough room in our back at the at our local store, uh, Just Games, um, to to seat a like well above what we usually ever end up seating. Um, so I usually don't. There's not usually like a hard cap on how many people can come because you wouldn't expect to meet what we could seat anyway. Yeah, um, I feel like a lot of kill team organizers can relate with this entire story. Yeah, kill team just takes up such little space. It's it's so easy to accommodate for. It is. Um, so yeah, it's a, uh, it's a much smaller footprint. I we were we're looking at a forty k players for the New York Open, and forty k just takes so much room. Yeah. So the it's tickets have to be way more expensive to make up for it, which is uh yeah, it's it's a lot. I never realized how much forty k players were playing for tournaments. Yeah, I mean, I'm really excited for Salt City though, uh, which you mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to be like the first, uh, it's not going to be like major sized. I think they're, they're, they're seating like 30. Um, but it's going to be the first like con that's going to have a kill team event that we've had in like Western, yeah, central New York, like, like ever. Like, I don't know the last, uh, since kill team has been out, I don't think that's really happened. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited. We just found out it's going to be, a like, I guess what you would, like a silver ticket. Quote unquote. Mm-hmm. I think um, the silver tickets for anyone who doesn't know is the organizers have the tickets so you can join the GW event, but I don't know how much people are getting like the flights and stuff are getting paid for by the tournament organizers. Yeah, I wouldn't expect I wouldn't expect it to be um like flight and hotel, like the golden tickets. But um the uh the the tickets in general for the US Open in, in Atlanta, they're they're hard to come by. <laughs> yeah, there's so not that the, many. Yeah, the fact that it's there, that Salt City is going to be a silver ticket is really, really exciting for me. Um, I can't. And wait are to you that. playing as a? You're going as a player, I assume. Yes. Yeah. Got to get a, another it's... bite at that apple, huh? <clears throat> oh yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, between that, hopefully Nova, um, I'd like to attend as well. New and York I'm Open? Uh, New York Open. Hopefully, that's uh, what are you November fourth, like November. 5th? Yeah, early. It's two weeks before the finals. If I can, yes. Um, I would like to do that one because it's it's New York and I'm in New York. So even though it doesn't feel like we're in the same state, <laughs> I know it's a fi- it's like a six hour drive back and forth. So it, it it does it is rough. I think we were yeah. looking at coming up to Rochester as a group, but we're going to Baltimore this weekend for the doubles tournament. So I, I don't Got think it. our drivers have it in us. Yeah, and I'm also going to ACO. So nice, um, nice. That'll yeah. be fun. Our group will be running that, and I don't think ACO will have a silver ticket, unfortunately. I am pushing for it, so we'll see. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Are you excited? to? Are you going to play the new hotness at ACO, the higher tech, after the oh, new patch? No, uh, very unlikely, but um, we'll see. Uh, I guess I can say what I'm taking to Toronto next week, because that's the 
by the time this comes out, I'll have already gone and people can look up and see how good or bad I did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, lay it on us. Uh, so I, after KTO, I played a ton of stuff. Um, I've been playing like a ton of different factions, like trying to see what like feels good. And um, I actually think I'm going to go back to Legionnaires um, for uh, for Toronto. Uh, and I'm going to stick with my nerfed Nurgle boys and uh, see if I can see, see how I feel about them after the uh, after the changes, because they still I still really, really like playing the team and they feel really good. Um, the nerf is unfortunate. But I still think I can do stuff with them, which yeah. is, I mean, we'll see. The nerf hurts them the most in the elites matchups, I think, where before they took a dump on non, they, they just had a lot, a lot better matchup against three damage weapons where that benefit is now gone. I played against Wormblade the other day. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, it's brutal. There's like two guns on the whole team that it even uh, Metagenic even works against. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mutagenic feels very like it definitely feels like it's a weird spot now. Like it feels like it doesn't do anything most of the time where I think what I would like is for it to at least always do something, just not reduce like four damage, which it was doing pretty consistently before. Maybe cap it at like it reduces two damage in an overall attack sequence or something. But... My hot take is uh, as a biased legionary player, um, <laughs> I don't think it should have been nerfed, period. Uh, it's the one thing in the data slate that has just driven me crazy. Um, c- like, I don't know, because as we're talking about the second most played team by like a mile. And they've never won a major tournament. Their win rate has never been above 55%. So it just boggles my mind that, that I, they're... I, I think they just wanted other people to use the other marks, but they probably should have just buffed the other marks. Just buff it's... Slanesh. Like, because people already play Zinj. Right. And, true. and people true. play corn. They should just buff Slanesh, probably. Uh, but, yeah. um, or just get yeah, more people better. talking about them. That's yeah. True. Just anything. Yeah. I do play Slanesh. Slanesh is on my roster. I don't run corn. And I think I'm going to be using it more in the future. Yeah. I mean, the plus one move has done great things for the intercessors. It's just that their ploys are kind of not really the most interesting a lot of the times. Yeah. As far yeah. as growing like your local Rochester community, have you ever had any um, crossover from like your digital space into real life, or does it go, or does it generally go the other way around? You meet people in real life, and then you they come onto the discords. Uh, you know, I'm like when you say that, you mean like as a content creator and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, you know, normally when we talk to our community people here, we're talking to like local um, like store people or people that just like know a lot of people in the community. But you have. You and Ryan obviously have one of the biggest online communities in general. So I was just yes. wondering if there's any crossover and how, how growing that community worked out. Most of my locals know, I think. Um, but I, it's, th- this is probably just a me thing. I just hate saying the words, I have a YouTube channel. I just don't like saying that. To, I don't know. It feels weird to say. Um, so I don't like put it out there a ton. I'm not like hiding it. But sometimes I'll have like a, a local come in and be like, Oh, I didn't realize you had a YouTube channel. I was just watching it yesterday and I was like, oh, cool. Uh, subscribe. <laughs> but um, no, I mean, uh, I think most of them know. I- I'm pretty sure. Um, but uh, I don't milk it, I guess. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. Yeah. I mean, me and Jason have, we have a, you know, our own little digital thing that we're trying and we're just trying to get more people to help grow their community. So we're, I was like wondering if there's anything that, you found really useful growing your digital footprint, I guess, for Kill Team. Yeah, no, it's a good question. I, I think there's like, there's a lot of pull, like, I, I think for the most part, um, with Salt City GT, uh, like, for instance, as an example, um, that's over in Syracuse, which is about an hour away. But for me, I guess, close enough that I can, I feel like I can help out. When I saw that that was happening, I reached out to the organizer, uh, Brian. And I said, hey, I have this channel. I'm an hour away. If you guys need any help, let me know. And it turned out they needed a TO. And I said, well, give me like a couple days and I'll talk to people and um, see what I can do. And, and we ended up getting uh, Eric Cecil over from uh, the Baltimore crew, like Baltimore, like the Plasma Spam guys. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're going to be running uh, Salt City. So it is nice to have those connections. Um, 
in an, in like an example like that, where it's like, I know I, I don't really want to TO the tournament because it's so hard for me to play in tournaments where I am that I'd like to play in something for once. Um, but knowing enough, like other like branches of different communities that are like adjacent is, uh, is really helpful. Yeah. That connects with one of my questions, which was actually, um, when, when you go to events, are you mostly running them or do you, do you play decently often or is that mostly, uh, TTS is your practice zone? Uh, yeah, TTS is where I get most of my practice outside of playing with Ryan. Um, most of the tournaments that we do have in Rochester, I run, um, it's been a long time since I've played in a tournament in Rochester. So, um, yeah, I, I try to, uh, host as much as I can, but it's, it's hard because some communities it's like, you know, you can't force people to play kill team at the end of the day. Um, and and it's weird looking at Rochester and and we don't have the biggest scene, but I think it's growing. And then you look over like two hours away at Toronto and they're like bustling. They've got like 24 players easily going to their events. So it's like, it's interesting. I don't know. Yeah. There's always a struggle with smaller or like to build up your scene, right? Cause it's start, you have to start from nothing a lot of the times, which is a struggle. (laughs) Yeah, it's, it's so sure. interesting. I feel like uh, Command Point is such like a, a central hub, and I feel like so many people that love Kill Team, it's they feel so connected to the community because of what you've done with it. And then it's crazy to hear that like in person, it's like the same thing as the rest of us. Yeah, there's nothing crazy going on in Rochester with Kill Team. Unfortunately, <laughs> I wish I could say that. Um, I, I hope to uh, to to make it that way in the future, but for now, it's still just regular old, you know, uh, Rochester rise community. And, rise and grind. Yep, yep. Have you, do you, does Rochester have like a regular community day that, that you guys are doing that you host or, you know, Ryan, or, you know, your store day, basically? It's harder for Ryan and I these days, just with the, like our work schedule, we can't really come out as often um, as we want. And we used to, um, Back before COVID, which actually goes back to the last ad, we had a really active group um, that was coming every single week. We were doing weekly stuff, and um, we just haven't been able to like rebuild that in the in the new ad so far. But working on it. Yeah, you've been playing Kill Team since uh, last edition, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you find that um, people from Kill Team 18 are still playing 2021 or are is it like are they like two different player bases? And has that kind of like schism hurt building your communities or was it mostly COVID? Yeah, it's hard to say because I like I think it was a little bit of both. I know for a fact that a lot of the guys that played Kill Team 18 here currently don't play the current edition of Kill Team. They actually play 40k. Um. And I don't know if that was a natural progression, if they would have been doing that anyway. But pandemic definitely hurt a lot. Um, it went from, you know, every week we had a decent sized group to we come out the other side of the uh of the pandemic and now we have a new edition for the most part. And you know, <clears throat> some of the people are playing 40k now, so it's hard to say what exactly it was, but I, I think the safe bet is that it was several factors and so like the people that play kill team now in our local community either weren't playing last edition at all or maybe they weren't playing any games at all and they've recently gotten into minis so um it's it's pretty separate outside of like ryan and i for the most part you guys don't have another person in the rochester area that you can that you have as maybe like a third who's also really into it uh we have um we do have Jonah, who, if if you guys check out our channel, we we do live streams. We try to do them like once or twice a month. Um, and Jonah is the guy that like runs our our live stream, and he has the the streaming setup. Um, and he he's actually going with us to Toronto to the uh, to George's event next week. Um, Very exciting. So yeah, he's been cool. But we met him right at the start of this edition, and he I don't think he was playing last edition at all. Yeah, I mean. If you and Ryan can't do it, then uh, maybe try to get Jonah to help run the community today. But I know it is. Uh, I know me and Jason both agree it's a lot to 
have to dedicate the day so i understand it's tough <laughs> yeah it is tough yeah the uh, uh the community so like we had been doing we had a, a once a week thing and um the store that we had been doing that at just added a new policy that like knocked derailed the whole thing but then like um we actually you know we're, we're pretty close to 100 members in the discord and it's pretty active and um i think it was it was pretty good timing actually for the store to kind of ruffle this up because you know all of a sudden we're like oh you know what i think we're just barely big enough that i think we can pull off kind of like spreading out around the twin cities because we're in the minnesota twin cities area mm -hmm. and um and spread it out and and just like you know like a hydra cut off the one head and you know four more heads yeah. pop out so um now we have a monday tuesday wednesday and thursday night that are all like 30 miles apart and uh and we're hoping to like so far we've had a handful of people show up to each like we I've, it sounds like I, you know i gotta double check and, and see what the people are saying but it seems like we've had like eight people show up to each which yeah, is that's really good. solid that's awesome. yeah that's really good the one of the problems that like uh at my store is that a lot of the people that play kill team uh, so like at the store, the probably the best night for this store in particular is like Thursdays for Kill Team. But a lot of the people who play Kill Team also play other games that already exist <laughs> as a community on those days. Um, like there's a there's a big Necromunda group at our local store on Thursday nights. And I know for a fact like all those guys would totally be down to play Kill Team, but they love Necromunda and they're not gonna switch from one game to another on the same night, unfortunately. Um so it's like that can also be like a uh, kind of a factor where you have people that play like different skirmish games and like the store has like limited like space depending on what night you want to play. So yeah, that's yeah. super true. I think we mentioned this a couple weeks ago, but have you tried asking the shop owners if there's like a down like a less busy day for you guys to try to set up as the new kill team day? Yeah, but the problem is like Everybody has like a different night that they can do it, <laughs> which is it's been such a pain in the butt. It's like, oh, I can do like two people can do Wednesday and two like three people can do Thursday, and then like three people can do like Tuesday or Wednesday or something. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah. it's it's tough. It is tough. It is tough. Organizing herding cats is a is a rough is a rough <laughs> yeah. life. Yes, it is. For um, the more competitive stuff. It, have you been playing any of the newer teams? I know you mentioned that you're going to take Legionary to Toronto, but did you try the new buffs on Phobos or the new higher tech circles on TTS? I don't know if Jason, you've tried it or, you know, the new hand of Archon or the exaction squad. Uh, personally, I have played, I was playing a bit of Phobos before the buffs. I haven't played them since. Um, they seem like they're in a pretty decent spot uh, post buff, but Archon I've played and I, I really enjoy them. Um, and I have played Hyro Tech after the buffs, and I think they're pretty strong now. And aside from that, Exaction I played a little bit too. I think they're not amazing, um, despite what I was hoping. Uh, but yeah, I think um, what else got buffed? Was there something else that got buffed? Casserkin. I have not played Casserkin after the buff. Yeah, Casserkin finally got their eighth wound. Yeah, I think Kasserkin might be kind of cool right now. Yeah, and like I... the main thing I wanted out of Kasserkin was uh, a combat knife that was three, four damage, and we just got there, that yeah. exactly. And I was like, just squealing and, and it giddy. And I was like, oh, this yeah. is so good. I love it. Yeah, they definitely seem much improved. Like both Hyrotech and Kasserkin got pushed up to a level where they both seem like they should be pretty playable. And obviously, Jason loves Kasserkin, and we talked to uh, Six Sided Legion where uh, Brett was the, I think, 12th place for Kill Team Open as Kasserkin, so... Yeah, and he was 11th a... place at LVO, so it's like... Was. Yeah, he's... he's nipping at the heels, so <laughs> I would assume that he's pretty excited, because, oh, yeah, the, yeah, the wound, the extra extra damage, and the eight extra elite points, those are all huge buffs for Kasserkin. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's way more than I was expecting, and I'm excited about it. <laughs> I, uh, I also love the higher tech changes. Um, they are super, super interesting to me right now. Would you I find any um, like tactics that you haven't heard anyone talk about or just things that you try that feel really good? Because I know a lot of people probably haven't played them. So in case any, you know, in case you got any ideas to help jumpstart new higher tech players. 
Uh, so I've been talking to some people and um, the consensus that we've come to is that the, uh, the nano mine, if there's one thing that's like kind of toxic now, it's the nano mine on the chronomancer. The, it's like the big aura that slows down your movement. Um, I think that is going to be really, really problematic for some teams to deal with, especially teams that get out activated by higher tech. Um, so like chronomancer, I think is a really interesting one. Um, technomancer I liked before and I think he's still good, but I don't think it's as good as it was because like I played one game with higher tech with technomancer and it was really funny to see an immortal re- uh, reanimate and come back with full wounds um which is only possible with technomancer but they come back uninjured anyway uh yeah. with the with the way the new math works so i'm not certain how important that is um but like anybody that has played the team at this point and i'm sure there's a lot of people that are playing them now after the buffs that didn't play them before are probably noticing how like insanely good this team is at scoring tech ops like they they are really good at scoring tech ops. Like they have the unearth tech op, which I think is insanely easy. Um, they have access to recon, so they get recover item. Uh, they have like three models with fly, so they can potentially play vantage decently. I think they're not bad with courier, um, because of reanimation. It's kind of funny. Um, and like in general, um, I, I just think they score tech ops very well. Yep, and scoring tech ops really well is now the name of the game in our game. Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah. like you can very easily like be in a setup on like end of turn two where you've got like half your tech ops done, and the rest is just like smooth sailing, and you can like get the rest of what you need pretty quickly and focus on denying, which I think they're pretty good at. Yeah, so I guess you kind of can play as if you have two different recover item tech ops yeah. between unearth artifice and being a recon team. So you can get the actual recover item. Yeah. yeah. But that's yeah, it's like, pretty, can, can you cool. stack those? I never even thought about like putting those side by side. So the reason you don't put them side by side is because the artifice is actually even easier than recover item. Cause you place it outside of six of your drop zone rather than outside of your territory. Uh, so nice. the artifice is usually like four or five inches closer. And on top of that, you only need to control the artifice. So it's actually, you only need to walk four inches. You should control them. for both of them because uh, oh, recover true. item is control, but you can pick it up, which means that you're yes. always controlling. So they work similarly, except unearth artifice is just much closer to you. Yeah. And the convenient part about it is that since it's control and it's just about six inches from your drop zone, like that, like a move dash from like, it, like just a move typically is, uh, is going to get you there even with your slow guys. Um, but I guess and, like, and you can even do it with the bug, like well, the, the bugs, bugs do it. that's what I was going. I think the bugs are amazing now. Yeah. Um, yeah. like I had to reread their rules when I played them for the first time. Cause I was like, there's no way these guys can do mission actions. Right. And then I look and it's like, yep, they can do mission actions. Yeah. They can they do were, pick up. They were always able to do mission actions, but yep. because their abilities cost you AP, they were hamstrung. Yeah. So like now the team actually has play on in the dark as well. So yeah, because having... you can like you just pass the APL for free and it's six inches away now, so it's a way more flexible. And then they're just like super conceal. They have fly. They have six inch movement. So you just like bolt them somewhere on turn one, and they're super safe and they score you points. Yeah. So um, for players who don't know, uh, Shane is talking about the two plasma sites. They're both. Uh, small two APL operatives with five wounds, but they have super conceal and they have fly, and they have they one of them just got a buff so that it has a free action to pass an APL to someone else. So it's their comms equivalent that's just impossible to hurt. Oh, I yeah. hadn't noticed that I could hand off the APL for free. I noticed that the uh, the other one didn't lose an APL for reanimating. Correct. Yeah. So oh, man, that's it's, amazing. It used to be it used to be three inches. Now it's six inches. So it's it's zero AP. Six inch APL buff. Um, and like some people say that they're slow, but I think a lot of the time in practice, the team is always fast when you need them to be fast. Um, yeah, because you can just choose to have a six inch movement, and the Chronomancer can give someone a three inch extra move. 
Yeah. So like if you need one guy to move up the board in a, into a certain spot on turn one, okay, well that guy's going to move seven inches on his basement. And that's a regular move. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like the guys that are moving four inches, you know, if you're not paying for the strap ploy to move faster, like the, typically the guys that you're, you're going to be moving four inches are going to end up being the guys that you don't need to move that and far like, anyway. And like you could have your apprentice be the one that moves fast, even though you didn't add that two inches. And then like all of a sudden your apprentice has a nine inch normal move. Yeah. The, the team also has a hilarious deep strike or alpha strike with like the chronomancer can, uh, if you give him the blast weapon, you can do the leech power to give him four APL and then cast the uh, plus three inch move on himself and then move seven and then 10 uh, from move dash and just like blast something um, with fly, which is really funny with fly. Yeah. yeah. It is hilarious. Yeah. I've never heard of anyone like point all that out. Um, everyone has such like a different way to look at it, which is actually one of my favorite things about the higher tech circle. Um, just like, there's so many options and there's so many combos that like, I feel like six months from now, there's still going to be like someone pulling off some shenanigans that no one's heard of. It's so complicated. When I was playing them, it was like, I activate my crypt tech and I'm looking at the board and I'm like, Whoa, I can do like 20 different things. And I don't know which thing is good. Um, they're, they're very galaxy brain to play. Uh, and I think, I think somebody's going to unlock them, um, in the coming months. Yeah, I mean, I know back when I was playing Pathfinders, I played against uh, Compendium Necrons one time, and they were real rough for comp- for Pathfinders because they take a lot of damage to kill and they get back up. So yeah. <laughs> now you just have that same problem. And you out-activate them a little bit harder, but you do get more tricks, whereas the old Necrons did not have any tricks. So, yeah. Oh, and the uh, other buff that I think is neat to talk about is they the Despotec, his ballistic skill increased, but they also increased his weapon skill. So if you um, give him the lethal five, he's like a pretty potent melee operative. He's four attacks on twos, three, four, lethal five. Um, so you can flex into him a little bit in melee. Um, and in general, the immortals aren't that bad in, in close combat. He can also give himself a free reroll, so he can have yes. balance in melee when he needs to. Yeah, because now demand, demand is himself. free. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. I mean, he can even demand himself shoot with balance. So he's they got a lot of buffs. Yeah, so yeah, they're a good I'm, team. I'm looking forward to my handful of Necron players in the New York scene, in the New York City scene, pushing out, pushing them out. Because we had players playing them, and I think one of them even went two one at one of the locals, one mm-hmm. of the monthly. So I fully expect someone to do pretty well with them. Yeah, one of my locals loves Necrons, and uh, he is uh, he's very excited about the changes. <laughs> You know, at the end of the day, people love painting Terminators. Yeah. An easy start. As far as other niche tactics or cool ploys, you're playing Legionary. Did you see that you did anything special when you were playing at um, Kill Team Open? Um, I don't know if I was doing anything like crazy special. I think... So I feel like Legionary players tend to overthink what they need to do with that team. Um, which, I, at least before the, the Nurgle nurse. I think now you need to, to think a little bit harder. Um, not that it's like an easy team to play, but I think like they, the Nurgle team is just fundamentally very strong and like you, you could just do work with them without going too crazy. And as far as like, like some of the Zinch stuff leans like pretty heavily into like turn one stuff and and like the four APL cheese. But um, I think now, especially playing on open board more, I think there's like genuine use case for taking Slanesh operatives um, occasionally in your lists. Like some of them, uh, and this is something I'm planning on doing at at Toronto, so we'll see how that goes. But um, like some of the open board crit ops maps have like two objectives in the middle. Like you'll have your two safe ones and then there's two on the other side and there will be like two right in the middle. Um, if you're playing against a horde, you're probably just not going to get those middle ones typically because uh, they're just going to wait you out and like threaten with like comms buff, melt a gun or, you know, whatever it is that they have. 
So like typically you just have to go down early, but um, what this ends up ha- like what ends up happening is they move their guys up after you've moved all your uh, after you've activated all your marines, and they sit on the middle points. And then like even if you win initiative next turn, like you might have set up a charge on that point, but like maybe you're charging like a goon, and they still have their plasma pointed there. So like if you go with like a Slanesh Shrive Talon, and you charge one of these two APL guys. And you pay to CP to make them one APL. They can't fall back from you because they only have one APL. You can take the point from them, and you're safe in combat. And then next turn, you can kill that guy and like launch further up the board. But things like that, I think like you have to get kind of creative with how you move up against like horde teams. Yeah, I absolutely love that, and I totally agree. Um, like uh, you know, Legionary is another one of those ones that, especially now that Nurgle has been nerfed. Uh, rest in peace, Nurgle's my 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 boy. <laughs> um there's gonna be so much room for like all these other crazy combos and like i i haven't seen a lot of slanesh over here in minnesota and uh and i especially haven't really seen corn so i'm hoping to see some some more of those guys shine yeah i honestly wish that they would unlock the roster just so that people could do- take all the operatives i think that would make them much more fun but they are one of the most balanced teams as far as win rate goes, so maybe maybe we don't need to unlock their full potential. Yeah, if I could take a Zinch guy, I don't. I definitely would. Um, like I think the Shrive Talon is like the one. He's such a like he could do so much stuff that he's probably the guy that I would be swapping around the most, like outside of Nurgle, because I am still running Nurgle um, over Zinch, and most of the time I'm gonna be taking Nurgle with like a Slanesh guy here or there. But um, it's, it's pretty interesting how like, I don't know, like with mutagenic flesh now, it's less just, I take it. And now it's more like, do I expect to get shot by the four damage weapon or the five damage weapon this turn? Um, if I can avoid it, I probably just won't use it. And I'll use implacable because typically what I was doing before I was using mutagenic every turn. And then starting turn two, I'd use implacable. So uh, there is like the, I don't want to call it an upside, but I'm spending a little less CP now. So I have a little more stuff to work with as far as like rerolls or veterans of the long war. Silver um, linings to every change. Right? Yeah, it's a, it's like my consolation prize. Um, but it, it's interesting to think about. Like some matchups, you just, it, you're going to be looking at your opponent's weapons and realizing that mutagenic is, doing almost nothing, uh, which is a major bummer. But um, Implacable is still amazing, and, and being able to like get the free crit save in, uh, when you're getting shot is really helpful as well. So that hasn't changed with Nurgle. They're, they're, they're still really reliable, which I like. Yeah. I mean, there's a reason why Intercessors are as good as they are, and being able to take a lot of damage and punch really hard is still a good combo in this game. Yeah, <laughs> 100%. Which is why we all think that higher tech is uh, much better now, because now they are both tanky and punch really hard. Yes, they are both of those things. <laughs> Glory be. So as far as upcoming events, we're, you're going to Toronto, you've got the Rochester event coming up, and then Salt City is in July. Is there anything else in the North Northeast that you know of? Um, coming like imminently outside of Salt City, I don't think so so there is um and i i don't know if this is gonna have kill team yet so i can't like say for sure but uh i'm hoping that du bois gt which is a big 40k tournament that happens every year in rochester uh, i'm hoping that there can be some kill team there and i know the guy that runs salt city gt is the same guy that runs du bois so i'm planning on talking to him when i go to that event and hopefully putting together something there because it's every year it's like uh, it's a major for 40k and a major for Age of Sigmar in Rochester at the uh, RIT in uh, big like hotel building, and it's a it's a cool event. It's a really fun tournament, and I'd love to see Kilting there because I was I was at Du Bois this past year, and um, just like walking around and and they have room, <laughs> they have extra room for Kilting if they wanted it. So it would be super cool to see that that come as like a weekend event. Sounds but that's not great. till like October, November, like uh, I see last quarter of the year. 
Sounds great. Yeah, I mean, hopefully, hopefully the Rochester tournament goes great because I know the struggle of putting on small tournaments. Yeah, it's it's not always easy, but um, I mean, honestly, it's it's very rewarding though when it happens and like you know you get to the end of the tournament and you're doing like prizes and it's it's a really it's a really cool feeling to to see that that like you made that happen, you know. Yeah. I think all three of us on here know that feeling in some way, shape, or form. So, 100%. Anyway, Shane, thanks for coming by to just another Kill Team podcast. <laughs> thanks for having me. Yes. Remember to like and subscribe if you're listening on a platform that does that. Leave comments as well. And uh, see you next time.